Welcome back to AlgaJS. Today's question is leak code 139, word break. So you're given a string S and a dictionary of strings. Return true if S can be segmented into a space separated sequence of one or more dictionary words. Note that the same word in the dictionary may be reused multiple times in the segmentation. So within our first example, we have the string leak code and we have a dictionary containing the words leak and code. And can we create leak code from these segmented words? And the answer of course is true. And then if we look at example three, we have cats and dogs. We have the dictionary containing cats, dog, sand, and cat. Can we create this string using a sequence of words from the word dictionary? Well, no, we can't, right? Because if we use cats, we get up to here, then we have and, right? And is here, but then we don't have OG. It's the same if we use the other sequence. So if we start off with cat, we'd have sand. And again, we'd be left with OG. So that's not possible. So we return false. So there are a number of ways we can solve this. We can use DP, we can use recursion and memorization, or we can use BFS. And today we're going to be looking at the breakfast search solution. So how are we gonna do this? Well, as a high level overview, we're going to loop through this string. We're gonna start off at index of zero, and we're going to check all possible strings to see if we can find a word that is equal to one of the words within the dictionary. So we start off at L, we look to see if that's in the dictionary. It's not, then we loop across, is L in the dictionary? No, until we get to leet. Once we've found leet, we add the ending index into our queue, and then we shift off the queue, the next position, and we repeat the process. So we check all these positions until we find the word within the dictionary. And then in order to determine whether we found an entire sequence of words, we are going to compare string.length. So let's put string.length, which is equal to eight. If this is equal to the last index within our search, then we can return true. So for this breakfast search solution, we're going to have a visited set, which is going to contain the indices that we have visited. We are going to have a set dictionary. So we're gonna store the dictionaries from this word in a set. And the reason we do this is because the set has O and lookup, and we are going to constantly be referring to the dictionary. So by storing it in set, we can improve the time complexity here. And like any breakfast search, we are going to have a queue. So this queue is initialized with the first index and now we can carry out the breakfast search. So if we shift off of Q, the position of zero, in order to check the substring within this string right here, we need to use s.slice, right? s.slice. And in order to use s.slice, we need to remember that the second parameter passed into slice is non-inclusive. So if we get a substring by passing in zero and one within this string here, the letter we're going to get from this is L. So if we go from zero to one, we get L. We check if L is in the set, it's not. So we check for LE, that's not in the set. We check for LEE, -E, not in the set. We check for LEET. Now this using string.slice is going from zero to four. We have found this within the set. So now we'd make a termination check. And a termination check is to see whether we've reached the end of this string. So is this index equal to string.length? It's not. So all we need to do is pass this index right here into Q and carry on searching to see if we find another word within this string within set. So we look at leet C, leet CO, leet COD, and leet code. None are found within the set. So we can now add this value into visited and repeat the process. So we shift off of Q4 and we start here. So we look to see whether C is in set. Nope, CO, nope, COD, nope, CODE. This is within set and the indices go from four to eight to get this. And remember, we're saying four to eight because string.slice B is non-inclusive. This is within the set, so we can compare the index of the last value of this substring with the length of the overall string. And if they're equal, we can return true. And that's the case here. So let's have a look how this approach would play out for cats and dog. So we add zero into the queue, the index of the first character within this string. We shift off of queue value of zero, and then we start the loop to check whether the substring is found within the set. So we don't find anything until we reach cat, and that'll be zero to three. So we can add the index of three within here. Then we search further. So we search cats, zero to four, that is found within the set. So we can add four in here, and then we search the rest of the string, so if we can find cats and, and none of these are found within set. Now zero has been seen, it can be added to visited, and seen as Q still has values in, we can shift off, look at index of three. So if we start at S, we compare. So is S found within the set? No. Is SA? No. 
is san no is sand yes we have sand so we can add the end index which is going to be seven here we can add seven within our queue we carry on so is sando in there or is sand dog in there nope so that is three three has been seen it can be added to visited then we can look at four so we shift the value of four off of q start at index of four the only value from here onwards is and and that finishes at seven as well so if we add seven again we have duplicates here four has been seen four can be added to visited and then we can look at seven so we shift off of q we start at seven can we find O in the set? No. Can we find O G in the set? No. We've reached the length of the string, so this doesn't return us with any results. So we can add seven within the visited. Now we shift off of Q, the value of seven again, in order to stop duplicate values from being checked. We can add a query at the top of the BFS while loop to see whether visited has the current value we've just shifted off. If it does, then we can just stop this process. And now Q is empty. We've exited the BFS and we can return false. So time complexity for this one, BFS by nature is O of N, but since we've created multiple loops within this, where we're looping through the entirety of this string, and then we're checking every single substring, this increases the time complexity to O N cubed. And then space is going to be O of N, where N is the value of indices that we store within the queue. So the first thing we need to do when coding this out is create the visited set, we also need a set that contains the values of the dictionary. So word dict. And we also need to initialize the queue for our BFS. Then we can start the BFS. So while q.length, we shift off of q to get the current value. So current is equal to q.shift. Then in order to avoid duplicates, we check visited to see if it has the current value. If it does, we don't carry this out. Otherwise, we'll loop through from current plus one. I is less than or equal to string.length because we want to go up to and including the last value of the string. And now we have to create those substrings. And the way we do that is we're going to slice. So we need to check in set if set has string.slice we're going to slice from the current value to i. We need to compare it to s.length. So if i is equal to s.length, we can return true because we've reached the end of the string. Otherwise, we push into q that index. And at the end of this, we can add current into visited. And lastly, once this loop carries out, and in the case of cats and dogs, where we don't find a solution, the queue is going to be emptied. We're going to exit this while loop and we can return false. Give this a run. And there you go. 